Hi everybody and uh, welcome back to uh, my uh, channel. In last week's uh, infrared video, uh, the opening part of the video uh, showed me editing uh, a digital infrared file to black and white. The editing process or sequence in that video was speeded up simply to save uh, video time. However, uh, since then and over the uh, past few months, I've received uh, questions uh, from people asking me how I edit my uh, pictures. The secret to my way of working, uh, be it a digital colour file or a, a black and white scan, is to have uh, total control over uh, contrast. I've used it for years and uh, I call it contrast grading. It's uh, not magic, it's just a way of uh, editing uh, to ensure that you get uh, good end results uh, keeping the editing process uh, simple and uh, basic. So this video is all about my workflow, how I uh, use a very simple method of editing based on darkroom methods uh, pulled over to the uh, digital uh, workflow. Working in the uh, wet darkroom was all about getting the uh, uh, prints correctly exposed uh, with the uh, correct contrast. Control over contrast and tones uh, can be done today using multigrade papers and filters. Now these filters allow you to uh, split grade contrast on one sheet of uh, paper giving uh, greater flexibility and creating prints uh, containing a wide uh, tonal and contrast range. This is what uh, contrast grading is all about, uh, working much the same way uh, but uh, in a digital workflow. Now in the infrared video uh, you might have noticed that I used uh, Nick Viveza uh, to contrast grade. Uh, this is only one of my uh, preferences to edit, however I still uh, use curves uh, in Photoshop a lot uh, to contrast grade. It's all about finding a workflow that suits you. In this uh, video I only use uh, three uh, tools to edit and uh, all these are part of the software and they don't come as an extra cost uh, such as uh, Nick Collection. Anyway, uh, on with the video and let me uh, demonstrate how I uh, contrast grade uh, my uh, pictures. So this is the picture that I'm going to demonstrate contrast grading on. It's uh, taken from a RAW file. The image was captured with a, a Canon 1DS uh, Mark II, a high-end camera of its time. And the location was Sperm Point, near Hull, at the entrance uh, to the Humber Estuary. Now, in the picture, it will come apparent when the, the sky's darkened down that there's cloud movement and there's also blur in the grasses. And it's because the exposure time was 256 seconds at f22. I used a, a 10 stop ND filter. Contrast grading is just a, a way of editing images using contrast only. We can uh, higher the contrast, lower the contrast anywhere within the picture. And it can also be used as your dodge and burn tool. By lightening the contrast or darkening it, the tones in the picture become lighter or darker. So, as I say, it can also be used as a, a way of dodging and burning. So let's get on with the demonstration. I'm going to duplicate it. Just so we can do a before and after. Uh, so the, the first thing is just to simply desaturate the picture. I'm not going to uh, touch any of the uh, colour sliders. Just do a, a desaturation which uh, now shows a very flat, boring uh, uh, picture. The next stage is to adjust the histogram. As we can see, it's falling short on the highlights and on the shadows. And to do that, I'm going to use uh, levels. Now I'm working on a Windows machine, and I press Alt, click on the, uh, the white triangle and pull the whites in until we just start to see them and then pull it back so they just disappear and then do the same with the blacks so we've got no block shadows or blown highlights now it's important to get the histogram uh, ends and the shadows and the highlights correct if you don't and the histogram short like it was there 
you're compressing the actual tones within the picture the tones won't be as good and you'll find that it won't print out as well so two stages first desaturation and then levels adjustment once I've done that we're going to go into the process of contrast grading now and it's a very simple way of working we just work in stages on the picture and uh, do them very gradually how I work is I break the image down into sections and for this picture I'll break it down into the sky the lighthouse and the land and deal with each area individually so the first thing I'm going to do is press Control J and that duplicates the the background layer and I'm going to deal with the sky now for that I'm going to use Camera Raw and in this video I'm just going to use three adjustment tools in uh, Photoshop that's uh, the texture slider the graduated filter and the curves adjustment in Photoshop so we're going to do a gradient adjustment um, so we select that make sure the exposures pull down round about there no set rules you just do it to what you feel looks right and then I'm going to pull this down about three quarters of the way into the picture and then click OK add a layer mask pressing ALT on the keyboard clicking the add layer mask icon at the bottom there and then using the brush tool and now I'll just mention a, a, a word about using the brush tool you have to get used to knowing when to use a hard brush or a soft brush if we want to just feather in adjustments we would use a soft brush if we're doing in intricate adjustments I would use a, a harder brush and you'll see that one as I'm ed editing this picture the other thing to be uh, aware of is the brush opacity so you'll be working with those three things the opacity of the brush the brush hardness and its uh, softness I've just done a gradient on the sky and I'm going to feather that in to darken the sky down and for that I'll just use a soft brush to set the brush hardness or softness just right click uh, with the mouse and then uh, we're on zero so that's the, the softest setting for this brush I use the bracket keys to make the brush larger or smaller and I'll just now darken that sky down set the foreground to white make sure the opacity is 100% and then just paint in that uh, adjustment with the gradient tool don't have to be too uh, se selective on the edges at this point if you want to see where you're actually uh, working on the pitch if you press the back uh, slash key on the keyboard it reveals a red uh, mask and it's showing now that I've actually painted in that area th uh, that I uh, made the adjustment with the gradient tool it'll also show, show you areas that you haven't done like this edge here just go over that and make sure that's uh, painted in and then once that's done if you want to get rid of the mask just press the backslash key again right I'm going to layer flatten that image and the process is just the same for each adjustment duplicate the background layer and then do the adjustment and again I'm going to go back into uh, camera raw gradient tool this time I'm not going to pull it down as far probably to uh, about halfway just a little bit further so the actual gradient is painted in you know as it feathers out into the land and then press OK again add in a, a, a layer mask alt click the add layer mask icon and then using the brush again uh, the brush is soft as you can see and then just painted in that adjustment just check the mask that's looking better now we can start seeing these uh, uh, the cloud movement the streaks in the sky I think the corner corner is going a little bit dark on that now to make that adjustment and lighten those change the foreground color to black and this is where we can use the opacity on the brush just lower it down and then again with a soft brush just feather out that darkness there 
probably gone a little bit too much there so lower the opacity down a little bit more and then I will paint it back in just to get it to blend in that's better so I'm not getting that dark edge so at the moment I'll just leave this guy lay flatten and now I'm going to work in uh, curves so again control J image adjustments curves now we can see the curve line uh, just to explain what happens if you pull it down and create an S curve you create more contrast that's the preview of it but we're going to place this contrast uh, selectively so I'm working on the land area now if you want to get rid of those uh, points on the curve just just uh, click on them press delete so I'm going to actually put an S curve on this you can use the arrow keys to pull down the uh, curve and the arrow keys also to push it up it's a more uh, precise way of working press OK and then add a layer mask and then we can paint in that adjustment make sure that the brush is at 100% opacity and we just keep working away just check with the mask you'll find when you get used to contrast grading and get uh, the hang of using the brush and the opacity settings that uh, you'll not get halos and the reason that you don't get halos is because you're actually shading in you're blending the tones uh, together so I'll lay flat on that one again control J image adjustment curves apply another S curve some nice contrast going on there see how it slowly builds up the contrast that's okay add a layer mask and paint that contrast in you can place it anywhere you want the contrast now if I placed the contrast there see how it darkens it there if I didn't want to place the contrast there and because what I'm trying to do is make the image darker in the foreground as it goes out in the picture to give it some depth we just have to uh, change the background colour to black and then we can just paint that, that area out keep it lighter there red mask see where we've been you can see the brush just shading it all in nicely if you go over spill onto the land like uh, like I've done there you can go back to black and then just shade that back in and then layer flatten control J again I'm keeping an eye all the time on the histogram click that um, icon just to refresh it go back into curves another S curve on the shadow area and then pull it up a little bit more and this time I'm just going to pull up the mid tones it's best to make small adjustments here rather than la large adjustments as it can uh, it could adversely affect the tones in the picture just a touch that's okay Add a layer mask again and then just paint that, uh, that adjustment in. I'll add a mask so you can see what's happening. Take the mask off. Layer flatten. Now we'll just have a little check on the, the histogram. So control J. Again I'll use levels for that. This is an important part of the editing, is to keep a check on these uh, levels. Again, pressing the Alt key, drag the slider until you start to see the white. This area here, where I'm pointing, that's where the a very part, bright part of the water. Now, if I pull this back and leave it like that, 
so just show that water and pull it back it's not going to increase the contrast uh, as much as I want it to do so I want to take it to this point and then press OK and then I'll avoid painting in that water uh, so I don't blow it out to pure white so again add a mask now I'm going to apply this all over the image apart from the actual water where it was showing it was blown and you can see now the contrast is building very nicely now uh, add a red mask sometimes you think you've got all the image but you haven't see I've caught some of the water there but the mask is showing me that now just to paint back in the water we just go to uh, black I'll probably zoom in for this using a small brush and then just paint that out and you can see we've lost that white in the that pure white in the water and then go layer flatten and this time I'm going to work on the lighthouse I feel it's gone a little bit dark I'm going to use the uh, curves adjustment but treat it more as a, a dodge and burn tool now in the fact that I'm got all I'm going to do is lighten those blacks the bricks in the lighthouse if we click on this hand icon it will give you a sample and if you click on the area where you want to make the adjustment it will place the point on the curve and that's where that tone lies the other thing I would uh, suggest is uh, Photoshop it's normally set to point sample I will put it to a 3x3 three three average and that will give you a better idea of where that tone lies it's averaging the tones out using the arrow keys I just lighten those bricks don't want to go too light and then press OK add a layer mask now this is where we would have to be a bit more careful more intricate and to do that I would go and harden the brush up around about 50% and then for this I'm going to zoom into this image add a mask to see where I'm going and then paint in that area that I've just made uh, lighter using curves we don't have to be too precise if we start to spill over on the edge this is where the uh, halo effect occurs so be careful not to do that you're okay sometimes just keeping a little bit away from the edge if you did spill over to, onto the edge such as this all you have to do is go to the background colour change it to black and then you can paint that back so we haven't go, gone over onto the onto the sky and then if I press the red mask off you can see there that the adjustments being made it's lightened the the bricks and it's effectively worked as a, a, a dodge tool there and it could work the other way if I wanted to darken it go layer flatten once we've done that right I'm going to go back now into the gradient tool so control J filter camera raw select the gradient tool pull it down again and just to adjust the exposure this is do, this is all to do with your own vision how you want the actual picture to look that's okay add a layer mask and we can darken down that sky brush tool set the brush again remember to do that to soft soft for shading hard for intricate work layer flatten and you keep slowly building the contrast in the image contrast grading works uh, converting uh, digital colour files to black and white it's very good at uh, increasing the contrast on the 
uh, black and white film scans. But for colour work, I don't think it's going to work as well. As, as you'll probably know, if you start altering the contrast uh, in a colour file, you start to alter the colour. So this really is for a black and white uh, workflow. Duplicate the layer again, and this time go back into curves. We're nearly done now. And this time I'm just going to lighten the mid-tones in the, in the uh, land. Again using the arrow key on the keyboard. That's okay. Add the layer mask. And now I can paint that uh, adjustment in wherever I want to do. I can light the uh, lighthouse there a little bit. So if I do that I will probably go with a brush harder. See, I'm not being too precise with this. This area up there. Probably a little bit on the roof. Always check with the mask. That's fine. Layer flatten. And then Control J. Again, back into curves. Trying to create some depth with the image using the actual tonal range. So if I go back into curves, I'm going to darken down the foreground here. Again, I'm going to use the hand tool, select round about there, put a point, bring it down, just to darken that down. I think sometimes if you've got a dark foreground and it goes lighter as you're looking into the picture, it just gives it some depth. Press OK, add a layer mask, and then paint that contrast in. Softer brush. You, you do get used to working with the, uh, the the brush tool using the soft and hard settings. Layer, flatten, and then I'm going to go back into camera raw. This time I'm just going to increase the texture in the foreground. So I'll use the actual uh, texture slider in Camera Raw. Just pull that texture slider up and press OK. You can see what that's done if I zoom in. On, off. Just increase the texture nicely, not too much. Then add a layer mask. But I'm not going to apply that te that texture all over the image. I'm just going to apply it, apply it to the foreground. Like that. And by doing that, when it's sharper in the foreground and it goes softer into the background, it does give this uh, illusion of, of depth. And then layer flatten. Control J again. And then I might just uh, add... add little bit more texture to make the cloud uh, movement look a little bit more prominent in the picture. That's okay. Add a layer mask. As you can see these are all very fine adjustments. Again a soft brush. Layer flatten. Ctrl J, image adjustments, curves, and then just add a little bit more contrast with an S curve, just a tiny amount, because I just want to get that foreground a little bit more contrasted and darker, bring those uh, that cloud movement out a little bit more. So press the preview and see what's happening. Press OK, add a layer mask, and just paint in that. Uh, Contrast adjustment. We can go back to it to black and then just selectively lighten certain areas of it. There, flatten. And then one final adjustment with curves is just to lift the picture again in the mid-tones. 
as I keep repeating, you're just slowly building the contrast in the image. That's okay. Mask again, and then. Maybe just lighten that uh, brickwork on the lighthouse. So I'll go to a harder brush. Maybe on the actual white area of the lighthouse. Layer flatten. And that's the finished picture. Uh, one final check is on the actual uh, levels. Image adjustment levels. Just see where we are with it. Looks absolutely spot on that now. No blown highlights. Virtually no blown blacks. Just tiny little bits at the bottom, but it's hardly nothing. Nothing to be concerned about that. So as you can see from this picture, uh, just using the curves adjustment, the graduated tool and the texture slider in Camera Raw, it's very easy to edit an image from a colour file to a black and white file using contrast grading. And as I said before, the same applies if you were scanning black and white negatives. It works really well uh, for that. So let's look at a, a before and after. Window range to up vertical. So as you can see on the right, we started with the colour image. On the left is the finished image. Just make them a little bit bigger so you can see them. You'd agree there's quite, quite a difference there. And you, you edit the pictures to, to what to, you want to convey from the picture. In this picture I want to convey uh, the movement in the clouds. You can see the, the actual movement in the, in the grass and yet we've got sharper areas in the grass. And with me using the, the uh, contrast to make it slightly darker in the foreground, adding texture to that area, it gives it added depth when you compare it to the colour image on the right. Everything just look, looks uh, flat. With this one it has got more depth. So consolidate the tabs. And then just to see what this would look like in a frame. So that's what the picture would look like in a frame. Just using the, this simple method of contrast grading. If you want to learn more about uh, contrast grading. Because there's, there's quite a bit uh, more to learn about it. I did a, a DVD uh, a few years ago. Uh, it's not available now as a DVD. It's a download. There's a link in the description where you can actually purchase it. It takes you through the whole process of contrast grading, but not only that, uh, it shows you how to use uh, texture as a uh, an editing tool to create depth, like I, I've shown you on here, how to create mood uh, in pictures, and many other things, and just using contrast as the tool. So as I say, there's a link uh, in the description to that download. So I hope you found uh, this uh, demonstration helpful, and I can tell you that I edit all my uh, photographs whether it's a digital colour file to black and white or a black and white scan using contrast grading. Right that's the end of the contrast uh, grading uh, demonstration I hope you enjoyed it it's a, a simple basic way of editing uh, that we practice uh, will produce striking black and white uh, images. You know I always say that there are four main elements that go into making a good black and white picture and that's uh, tonal range, uh, contrast, uh, texture and uh, mood. Uh, get all four right and you're on your way uh, to making good black and white images. My contrast uh, grading tutorials cover all the above and uh, I'll leave a link in the description to purchase the video tutorials if you would like to learn more about it. Once again if you liked the video and found it helpful and interesting give me a like uh, better still subscribe to my channel and uh, thank you for watching and i'll uh, see you in the next video